Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. In this video, we will be learning about the muscles of the lower limb. As an introduction, the muscles of the front of the thigh include the sartorius, the quadriceps femoris and the articularis genum. The quadriceps femoris is in turn made up of four muscles. The rectus femoris, the vastus medialis, the vastus lateralis and the vastus intermedius. Now let's look at these muscles in detail. Firstly, we have the sartorius muscle. It originates from the anterior superior iliac spine and the upper half of the notch below the spine. Now this is the right hip bone. The sartorius originates from the anterior superior iliac spine and the upper half of the notch below the spine, right here. It inserts into the upper part of the medial surface of the shaft of the tibia in front of the insertion of the gracilis and the semitendinosus muscle. This is the right tibia and this is its medial surface. The sartorius inserts into the upper part of the medial surface of the shaft of the tibia in front of the insertion of the gracilis and semitendinosus. This is the insertion of the sartorius muscle. This is the sartorius muscle. It originates from the anterior superior iliac spine and the upper half of the notch below the spine and inserts into the upper part of the medial surface of the shaft of the tibia in front of the insertion of the gracilis and semitendinosus. Moving on to the nerve supply of the sartorius, it is supplied by the femoral nerve. Note that all the muscles of the front of the thigh are supplied by the femoral nerve. The action of the sartorius muscle is that it is the abductor and lateral rotator of the thigh and also a flexor of the leg at the knee joint. Now, as a whole, the sartorius muscle originates from the anterior superior iliac spine and the upper half of the notch below the spine of the hip bone. It crosses the femur and inserts into the upper part of the medial surface of the shaft of the tibia in front of the insertion of the gracilis and semitendinosus right here. Moving on to the next muscle, we have the quadriceps femoris. As I told earlier, the quadriceps group of muscle has four muscles in it, that is the rectus femoris, the vastus lateralis, vastus medialis and the vastus intermedius. Firstly, let's look at the rectus femoris. The rectus femoris is fusiform shaped muscle. Its superficial fibers are bipinnate while its deep fibers are straight. Now looking at its origin, the straight head of the rectus femoris originates from the upper half of the anterior inferior iliac spine. The reflected head of the rectus femoris originates from the groove above the margin of the acetabulum. Now, as you can see here, the straight head of the rectus femoris originates from the upper half of the anterior inferior iliac spine. The reflected head of the rectus femoris originates from the groove above the margin of the acetabulum, right here. The rectus femoris inserts into the base of the patella anterior to the vastus intermedius muscle. Now, in order to remember the insertion, consider a diagram of the patella like this. The rectus femoris inserts into the base of the patella right here, anterior to the vastus intermedius. Vastus intermedius muscle inserts into the base of the patella. So, the rectus femoris attaches anterior to it right here. This is the rectus femoris muscle. Its straight head originates from the upper half of the anterior inferior iliac spine and the reflected head from the groove above the margin of the acetabulum and it inserts into the base of the patella anterior to the vastus intermedius right here. Now looking at its nerve supply, it is supplied by the femoral nerve. The action of the rectus femoris is that it is the extensor of the knee joint and it is also known as the kicking muscle. Now as a whole, the rectus femoris muscle originates from two heads that is a straight head and a reflected head. The straight head originates from the upper half of the anterior inferior iliac spine while the reflected head originates from the groove above the margin of the acetabulum right here. 
and it inserts into the base of the patella anterior to the vastus intermedius muscle. Now looking at the next muscle, we have the vastus lateralis. It originates from the upper part of the intertrochandric line, anterior and inferior borders of the greater trochander, the lateral lip of the gluteal tuberosity and the upper half of the lateral lip of the linea aspera. Now this is the right femur. The vastus lateralis originates from the upper part of the intertrochandric line as you can see right here. The anterior and inferior aspects of the greater trochander, the lateral margin of the gluteal tuberosity and the upper half of the lateral lip of the linea aspera as you can see right here. The vastus lateralis inserts into the lateral part of the base of the patella. Now in order to remember the insertion of the vastus lateralis, let us consider this is the patella. We can divide it into two parts, this as the medial side and this as the lateral side of the patella. Now the vastus lateralis inserts into the lateral part of the base of the patella. Now, you, you all know that this is the base of the patella, this is its lateral side and this is the lateral part of the base of the patella. So the vastus lateralis inserts into the lateral part of the base of the patella right here. This is the vastus lateralis muscle. It originates from the upper part of the intertrochandric line, the anterior and inferior borders of the greater trochander, the lateral lip of the gluteal tuberosity and the upper half of the lateral lip of the linea aspera. It inserts into the lateral part of the base of the patella. The vastus lateralis is supplied by the femoral nerve. The action of the vastus lateralis is that it extends the knee joint and helps in standing, walking and running. Now as a whole, the vastus lateralis muscle originates from the upper part of the intertrochandric line, the anterior and inferior aspects of the greater trochander, the lateral lip of the gluteal tuberosity and the upper half of the lateral lip of the linea aspera and it inserts into the lateral part of the base of the patella. Moving on to the next muscle, we have the vastus medialis. It originates from the lower part of the intertrochandric line, the spiral line, the medial lip of the linea aspera and the upper one-fourth of the medial supracondylar line. The vastus medialis originates from the lower part of the intertrochandric line as you can see right here. The spiral line as you can see right here, the medial lip of the linea aspera indicated in red and finally the upper one fourth of the medial supracondylar line. The vastus medialis inserts into the medial one third of the base and the upper two thirds of the medial border of the patella. Now in order to remember this. Consider this as a patella, this as the medial side, this half as the medial side and this as the lateral side. Now the insertion of the vastus medialis comes on the medial one third of the base. This is the base of the patella and if we divide it into three parts like this, the vastus medialis inserts into the medial one third of the base of the patella right here and the upper two thirds of the medial border of the patella. So this is the medial side and this is the medial border and the insertion will be on the upper two thirds. That is if we divide this into three parts, one, two and three, the, ins the insertion of the vastus medialis comes in the upper two thirds of the medial border of the patella right here and the medial one third of the base of the patella. This is the vastus medialis muscle. It originates from the lower part of the intertrochandric line, the spiral line, the medial lip of the linea aspera and the upper one-fourth of the medial supracondylar line and it inserts 
into the medial one third of the base and upper two thirds of the medial border of the patella. The vastus medialis is supplied by the femoral nerve and its action is that it extends the knee joint, it prevents the lateral displacement of the patella. Now as a whole, the vastus medialis originates from the lower part of the intertrochandric line, the spiral line, the medial lip of the linea aspera and the upper one fourth of the supracondyla line and it inserts and it inserts into the medial one third of the base and the upper two thirds of the medial border of the patella. Moving on to the next muscle, we have the vastus intermedius. It originates from the upper three fourths of the anterior and lateral surfaces of the shaft of the femur. Now, as you can see here, this is the femur. The vastus intermedius originates from the upper three fourths of the anterior and the lateral surfaces of the shaft of the femur. The upper three fourths. One, two, three. Three fourths of the shaft of the femur. The vastus intermedius inserts into the base of the patella. Since it is intermedius, it inserts into the base of the patella. This is the vastus intermedius muscle. It originates from the upper three fourths of the anterior and lateral surfaces of the shaft of the femur and inserts into the base of the patella. It is supplied by the femoral nerve and its action is that it extends the knee joint. Now, as a whole, the vastus intermedius originates from the upper three fourths of the anterior and the lateral surfaces of the shaft of the femur and it inserts into the base of the patella. Moving on to the last muscle that is the articularis genu. It originates from the anterior surface of the, the femur. articularis genu originates from the anterior surface of the femur. It inserts into the suprapatella bursa or the synovial membrane of the knee joint. The articularis genu is supplied by the femoral nerve. Its action is that it pulls the synovial membrane upwards during the extension of the knee, thus preventing damage to it. I hope you found this video helpful. To get updates on my latest videos, click on the subscribe button. To get notifications, tap on the bell icon. Thank you for watching.